Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Thank you very much for joining our today's session on HEC Law Gap Training. My name is Zubair Abbasi, and uh, I represent the Global Institute of Law, Oxford. The mission of Global Institute of Law is to make legal education easily accessible globally. As part of uh, our mission, we present to you our faculty who will provide you brief introductions and uh, an overview of the topics those would be covered in low GAT test. This is uh, me once upon a time when I was uh, young, I did my PhD uh, from Oxford. I was chief evening fellow and I'm also editor of Sharia Source of Harvard Law School. Like all great law presentations, this presentation also starts with a disclaimer. The views expressed by the presenters are their own in their personal capacities and do not represent either the Global Institute of Law Oxford or any other institution they are or have been affiliated with. While the information provided during these sessions is true and accurate to the best of our knowledge, neither the presenters nor the Global Institute of Law Oxford accept any legal responsibility for any errors or omissions that may be made or results obtained from the use of such material. So with this, I will um, hand over to Mohsin Muntaz, who will uh, introduce us with several provisions of the Constitution of Pakistan. Hello, I am Mohsin Muntaz. Uh, I am a practicing lawyer at Lahore, and I am a former judge. I will be doing uh, the session, the first session on introduction to the constitution and uh, four chapters. The fundamental rights, the introductory part, the parliament and the judicature, which are the part of the law GAT syllabus. So, the structure of the session will be to just to uh, quickly take you through the overview of the constitution uh, 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 presentation. And then we will turn to the provisions because the law GAT exam is a multiple choice question exam. So I'll be, uh, I'll have to take you through the individual important constitutional provisions, which, I, which in my view are important uh, for the purposes of the exam itself. I'll be sharing my screen now uh, uh, relating to uh, the presentation now. So, the Constitution of Pakistan is a hybrid common law document. Why we say hybrid? Because it takes constitutional principles from both British and US constitutional law. As we all know, the British constitutional framework is based upon common law system with parliamentary supremacy. And it's based primarily on customary laws and conventions. It is an unwritten constitution uh, regulated with through a series of constitutional conventions and traditions, uh, which can of course be amended by the parliament through simple majority because the parliament is supreme. Uh, the monarch remains at the top level of the government, although symbolically in the modern times, but it remains there. So British constitution, uh, which is unwritten and based on constitutional conventions, this is the basic uh, uh, information about British constitution, which we need to know at this time. U.S. constitutional framework is the first written constitution, as it is said, uh, of a nation state. It, it is a federal structure 
uh, it has a complex judicial system because because there are courts at federal level and then there are courts at a uh, state level so this two tier structure of the courts may make it intricate to understand uh, then there are uh, there were fundamental rights included in the us constitution via constitutional amendments which are known as bill of rights so uh, we have uh, taken the principles from both the us constitution and the british constitution pakistan had uh, a kind of a bitter experience with constitutional uh, constitution making we had three constitutions in this short span of years since our independence there was a constitution of 1956 there was a constitution of 1962 then there was an interim constitution of 1972 and then there was this constitution of 1973 uh, which is currently in vogue <laughs> and this constitution of 1973 has undergone amendments many times it has been amended 26 times since 1973 there have been some important constitutional amendments which are uh, which are 18th 8th and 13th amendments which tilted it towards presidential system then there came the 18th amendment in 2010 it was one of the most comprehensive uh, and reformatory uh, constitutional amendment in our constitution it it basically what it did was it again pulled the constitution back to the parliamentary system and then it one of the biggest hallmarks of 18th amendment was to introduce provincial autonomy in the constitutional system of pakistan and then three fundamental rights were introduced which will which we will go through in just a bit and then it also did some other uh, uh, amendments as well including but not limited to uh, the curtailing of ordinance making powers of the president and the governors the legislature in constitution of pakistan is bicameral there are two houses one is senate with a six year term elections are held every 3 years half of the members depart and half uh, and are replaced by new members so it's a continuing house it's never vacated completely the senate national assembly on the other hand which is the lower house is with five years term it is replaced completely after the lapse of 5 years and then there is this legislative business of the parliament which we will have uh, which we will go through in just a while and there are unicameral legislatures at the provincial level this means at the provincial level there are there is only one chamber of the uh, of the assembly that is the provincial assembly which we call it as a provincial assembly so there is a provincial assembly of punjab kpk sindh and balochistan now turning towards the judiciary there are constitutional courts which are known as superior courts these are three sorts of courts five high courts at the provinces one federal shariat court and then there is the supreme court of pakistan article 175a briefly uh, did completely lays down the procedure uh, how the judges of the superior judiciary are appointed then there are substantive provisions regarding procedural and substantive provi- pro- provisions regarding 
contempt and then there is this supreme judicial council which lays down the procedure for removal of judges let me just turn to the actual text of the constitution and we will go through some important constitutional provisions in the process to understand and to memorize and to comprehend how the the constitution works at uh, the heart of our country i'll just be sharing the actual text of the constitution so just be with me it 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 will just take a while so this is the preamble of our constitution of islamic republic of pakistan 1973 which was promulgated on 12th april 1973 by the constituent assembly preamble is basically the introduction of the constitution and lays down the fundamental principles upon which the constitution is built one of the a few important principles i will highlight that is the democracy the principles of democracy freedom equality tolerance and social justice and then there is this uh, most debated upon value of preambular value as we call it it is the minorities the free freedom to profess their and practice their religion to the minorities then independence of judiciary is also one of the preambular values and uh, so on so forth now let me just turn to the introductory chapter uh, of the constitution which is part 1 part 1 contains six articles article 1 is one of the important things to remember because article 1 postulates the territories of pakistan which territories constitute the islamic republic of pa pakistan these are article 1 sub article 2 balochistan khyber pakhtunkhwa punjab and sindh and islamabad capital territory let me just highlight quickly that recently there was this at at instead of clause this clause c there was a clause c which read as follows federally administered uh, administered tribal areas this clause c was omitted by 25th amendment act of 2017 and the effect of this 25th amendment is that federally administered tribal areas are now part of uh, uh, the territories uh, the provinces one of the provinces khyber pakhtunkhwa to uh, and and their independent identity has been uh, just revoked and now they have been made part of the provinces Islam is the state religion according to article 2 the objectives resolution has been made substantive part of the constitution and then there is this article 3 which is one of the important articles which highlights that there will be no exploitation uh, uh, and all forms of exploitation and are have been eliminated and state has been burdened with this responsibility to eliminate all kinds of exploitation article 4 is the mother of the fundamental rights as it is called rights of individuals to be dealt with in accordance with law this is an article which gives an actionable right to the citizens of pakistan to be treated in accordance with law the law here uh, 
the law here means not only the law of the land made by the parliament but also the constitutional provisions themselves so law means the constitution the laws made the, by the parliament then comes article 6 which is high treason high treason has been defined in the constitution and it is uh, there is an act of parliament punishment of high treason act which prescribes how the trial would be processed and what will be the punishments now coming towards fundamental rights fundamental rights start the chapter of fundamental rights start with article 8 article 8 forms one of the biggest grounds of judicial review we all know that the power of judicial review enjoyed by the high court is granted by article 199 and by the supreme court is the article 184 that is the substantive power of judicial review but on what grounds judicial review can be invoked and granted by the court has to be looked into the context of the constitution itself article 8 provides that laws inconsistent with or in derogation of fundamental rights to be void this is a limitation on the parliament this is what makes the constitution supreme document of the land the parliament cannot make any law which is inconsistent with the fundamental rights the rights contained in this chapter security of person no one shall be no person shall be deprived of life and or liberty save in accordance with law is the foremost of the fundamental rights save in accordance with law means that life or liberty can be taken away by the state in accordance with the laws which are made by the parliament but which are not inconsistent with the fundamental rights there is this doctrine of proportionality which kicks in here and which uh, we do not want to go into the details of that doctrine but because it's an independent subject in itself but the doctrine of proportionality postulates that uh, there the restrictions on the fundamental rights can only be reasonable and can only be made to the extent which are needed then there are safeguards uh, as to arrest and detention by article 10 which is against arbitrary arrest and which also makes provision for preventive detention the laws regarding preventive detention this article 10a has been added by our 18th amendment and this is one of the biggest uh, milestones in our constitutional history which embodies the principles of due process in our constitution in form of this fundamental rights and it says that in determination of civil is civil rights and obligations and or in any criminal charge against him a person shall be entitled to a fair trial and due process so there are two things determination of civil rights and determination of any criminal charge so whenever this is going to happen a person has a right to fair trial and due process and what is fair trial and what is due process there is a long chain of judgments both uh, at local and foreign jurisprudence to explain what is fair trial and due process then the next important article is protection against against retro retrospective punishment no person can be punished for a crime which was not a crime at the time 
when the act was committed and then no one can be punished for a punishment greater than the one given at the time when the act was committed this is a long standing this is the embodiment of a long standing principle of criminal law that these two things cannot happen because if these things are these two things are allowed it will cut the very root of human civilization protection against uh, double punishment and self incrimination this is known as uh, double jeopardy concept no one can be prosecuted or punished for the same offense more than once please note that there are two ingredients of this article prosecuted or punished so the courts have held the superior court courts have held the in this regard that even prosecution cannot start even trial cannot be started if the earlier trial has ended in has been concluded in acquittal or conviction either and then there is this uh, 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 article 3b 13b which says that a person cannot be compelled to be a witness against himself this article again is very important this sub, sub article is again very important which uh, provides that there will be no compulsion so the word is compulsion you will find a provision in criminal law when we will see it uh, in in our criminal law section there is this section 342 which provides for the accused to be in in the code of criminal procedure 1898 which provides that an accused can be a witness for his defense but that that has been diluted and the courts have held that the accused cannot be compelled to be a witness even under that provision because it violates article 13b then there is right of dignity of man article 14 and the next considered considerable article is 19a right to information which has been added by the 18th amendment again uh right to information provides and gives fundamental right to every citizen of pakistan to have access to all matters of public importance information regarding all matters of public importance subject to regulation and reasonable restriction freedom of press religion profess religion and to manage religion religious institutions is contained in article 20 and then there comes article 25 which postulates the equality of citizens and uh, ordains that there can be no discrimination amongst the citizens on the basis of sex and it also provides that all citizens are equal before law and are entitled to equal protection of law just as a passing reference i would say here that the superior courts have evolved two principles intelligible differentia and reasonable classification the superior courts have held that if these two elements are present in any law or any regulation which apparently discriminates between two communities two classes of people then only and then only a law or regulation can stand the test of article 25 reasonable classification and intelligible differentia that there should be intelligible differences between the two communities and reasonable classification and so so as to sustain a law making such provisions right to education article 25a has been added by article 18 uh, 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 18th amendment to the constitution as i was um, earlier saying so then there are principles of policy the next chapter we are going to look at 
as part two, chapter two, is principles of policy. Principles of policy are those principles which are, I would say, recommendations of the constitution. They are not placed on that highest pedestal at which the fundamental rights are placed, but they are a bit lower than the fundamental rights because of Article 30. Article 30 sub Article 2 says that validity of an action or of a law cannot be called in question on the ground that it is not in accordance with principles of policy and no action shall lie against the state or any organ or authority of the state or any person on such ground. So this is what principles of policy makes principles of policy a bit lower in importance. However, uh, the superior courts of late have developed this jurisprudence that this does not mean that the state can outrightly reject or ignore the principles given in this chapter. They say that there is a level of responsibility which has to be shown by the state and these principles of policy have to be given some regard. There has been a recent, recent judgment, PLD 2021 Supreme Court 770, where the Supreme Court, three member bench of the Supreme Court, uh, headed by the Chief Justice, has laid down that the laws, it has to be made sure by the state that the, the laws promulgated by the parliament are not against the spirit of the principles of policy. These principles include Islamic way of life, promotion of Islamic local government institutions, and other such principles. Now coming to the uh, next chapter, which is the parliament. Majlis Ashura, parliament, article 50, starts from article 50 and ends at article 89. Majlis Ashura, parliament has, uh, in terms of Chambers, there are two chambers, bicameral, but in terms of components, there are three components of Majlis Ashura Parliament, which are the President, the Senate, and the National Assembly. So these are the three components which compose Parliament, because without the assent of the President, not, no bill, no law can be passed. No bill will become a law unless assented to by the President. There are restrictions on the president in this regard, of course, but uh, uh, he remains a very important part of the parliament. An important thing to note in Article 51 is that there are 336 seats for members of National Assembly. This is uh, a figure which has recently been changed uh, let me just, this is the table which represents the distribution of seats. 20 seats for Balochistan, 55 for KPK, 173 for Punjab, 75 for Sen, 3 for Federal Capital, total 326. Uh, and there are 10 seats, of course, which are beyond this table uh, uh, and th th that are reserved for minorities. So let me just show you the table as it was before the 25th Amendment. This is the table which was before 25th Amendment and you can see there is this portion of federally administered tribal areas, 12 seats, which has now been uh, 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 omitted. And seats have been again redistributed. So uh, this is the main uh, composition of the National Assembly, uh, which is the lower house in the parliament. And then there is this term, five years term of the National Assembly, after which it stands dissolved by operation of law. There are speaker and deputy speaker of the National Assembly, and then <clears throat> there are 
there are provisions regarding voting there are provisions regarding the process uh, to be followed by to be followed during the sessions of the provincial assembly dissolution of national assemblies article 58 is one of the important articles there was this article article 52 58 2b which has been omitted which gave president the power to dissolve the national assembly in certain circumstances that's why we say that 18th amendment was a step towards restoring parliamentary system of the government because it curtailed the power of the president to dissolve the national assembly in the yes, yes, yes. highlighted in article 58 to b then the senate's composition is provided in article 59 and then chairman and deputy chairman of senate and then there are other uh, provisions relating to senate uh, one of the most important articles which you often uh, hear in debates in electronic media print media and otherwise are 62 and 63 these two articles are provide the qualifications for a person to become member of majlis ashura parliament so any person who intends to contest an election and wants to be elected for either national assembly or senate it's these are this is the checklist which he has to uh, uh, cross before becoming a member of the parliament then there are disqualifications in 63a vacation of seats and then there is this legislative procedure it provides that a normal bill shall be introduced in national assembly then it will go to senate and if passed it will go to the president for assent and then there are certain scenarios which have been discussed as well money bills have been separately provided for let me just clarify on a, a very important aspect here uh provisions relating to finance any bill relating to finance has to be introduced as a money bill and which is the procedure for which is uh, 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 are slightly different from the normal legislation but uh, but again separate provision for money bills have been made because financing power is one of the most important powers of a state so uh, then comes further legislative provisions which may or may not be important and then there is this ordinance making power of the president article 89 the president can promulgate an ordinance if the parliament is not in session and he considers that it is necessary to take immediate action and make and promulgate an ordinance and there are circumstances which require the same so only then the president can promulgate an ordinance there are again restrictions on presidential ordinance making power because it the the ordinance stands repealed at the end of 120 days from its promulgation and it can be disapproved by the assembly if a, a, a resolution to that effect is passed however the national assembly has been given the power to extend a resolution if it uh, uh, so deems fit and uh, the period of extension uh, is again 120 days and it's cannot be made twice so only one extension can be granted so this means that four months and then four months that's it uh this concludes our parliament chapter
and then there is our final chapter for today's discussion is the judicature which starts from article 175 and 175 <clears throat> this chapter this part 7 contains various chapters which are relating to the judiciary mm. the supreme court the high court and the federal sharia court. and then Article 175, Establishment and Jurisdiction of Court. One of the most important articles, conceptually, in your practice, in your academic side, everywhere. Article 175 is one of the most fundamental articles when we talk to, about the judiciary. There shall be a Supreme Court, a High Court for each province, and High Court for Islamabad Capital Territory, and such other courts as may be established by law. These such other courts established by law are called, are all the courts which are uh, uh, operating in Pakistan, including the district judiciary, because the district judiciary is created by various laws, uh, the jurisdiction to the district courts. District courts is given by uh, the Civil Courts Ordinance 1962. And on the other hand, to the magisterial and sessions courts are uh, uh, conferred jurisdiction by the Code of Criminal Procedure 1898. 175 sub article 2 lays down that no court shall have any jurisdiction save as or may be conferred on it by the constitution or by or under any law. So conceptually, none of the courts in Pakistan has jurisdiction except it is conferred by the constitution or by any law. So there is, uh, uh, so this is the fountain of power for the judiciary in that context. Appointment of judges to Supreme Court, High Courts, and Federal Sharia Courts. There are, uh, there is this judicial commission which consists of these members when it comes to the appointments of Supreme Court judges. And then there is this composition of the commission when it comes to the judges of the high court. So you see, and, and there is just one addition, if federal Sharia court judge is being appointed, the chief justice of federal Sharia court and the senior most judge of that court is also made the member. So, this Judicial Commission is then followed by a Parliamentary Committee. You can see its composition right here. Parliamentary Committee was originally supposed to uh, uh, review the recommendations of the Commission and to act accordingly. However, may confirm, you, see, you will see sub-article 12, may confirm the nominee by majority. However, uh, in the very early days of the birth of Parliamentary Committee, right after the 18th Amendment, there was a situation where four judges of the Lahore High Court were not confirmed uh, by nominations. For four judges of the Lahore High Court were not confirmed by the Parliamentary Committee. This section of the Parliamentary Committee was brought to the Supreme Court and it resulted in the judgment of Munir Hussain Bhatti versus Federation of Pakistan reported as PLD 2011 Supreme Court 407. In this judgment, the Supreme Court diluted, diluted the role of the Parliamentary Committee and ruled that the Parliamentary Committee cannot sit over judgment in, on the recommendations of the Judicial Commission because it violates the principle of independence of judiciary and the antecedents of the nomination nominees, the legal side, the parliamentary committee cannot comment upon. However, if there are other things like character, like other backgrounds, checks and other things, 
then of course the parliamentary committee can comment and not confirm a judicial uh, a nominee of the judicial commission this judicial verdict gave birth to a judicial commission which is much more powerful than it was originally thought by the provisions of article 175a there is on this is this ongoing debate on the point which has recently been resurfaced on some judicial appointments now uh, coming to the next part uh, next chapter of part 7 is the supreme court the supreme court of pakistan uh, is has been established by article 176 most importantly the number of judges in the supreme court is determined by an act of parliament which is presently 17 appointment process is given in 175 a judges have to make oath retiring age is 65 acting chief justice acting judges appointment of ad hoc judges seat of the supreme court is at islamabad and then there are benches uh, original jurisdiction most debated upon article is 184 the original jurisdiction in any dispute between two or more governments yani federal government and provincial government dispute or dispute between provincial governments they can have recourse to the original jurisdiction of the supreme court and uh, uh, there is this article 1843 which is the most debated upon article and uh, often comes into debate whenever supreme court takes a so motto notice because uh, it uh, it is that our it is the article which provides original jurisdiction to the supreme court in relation to matters which are of public importance enforcement of any fundamental rights and pu public importance appellate jurisdiction of the supreme court is defined in article 185 and there are these scenarios article sub article 1 of 185 and sub article 2 of article 185 only in these scenarios a person can file an appeal in the supreme court as a matter of right other than that a person has to obtain a leave to appeal before the supreme court whether it be a civil or a criminal matter article 185 sub article 3 lays down that appeal will only lie if the supreme court grants leave in any other scenario other than the above two sub article there is this advisory jurisdiction of the supreme court and where the supreme court can uh, render opinions supreme court can transfer cases issue and execution of process article 187 1 most important thing is the complete justice power of the supreme court which provides that the supreme court can make any order which is it it thinks fit which is one of the largest powers given to the supreme court any such district direction order or decree shall be enforceable throughout pakistan and shall where it is to be executed in a province uh, it shall be executed as if it had been issued by the high court of that province one of the important provisions any direction by the supreme court is enforceable by article 1872 by the high court of that province in which it has to be enforced 188 is review power of the supreme court 189 is the embodiment of, of principle of a uh, stay decisis in pakistan which provides that the judgments of the supreme courts are binding on all administrative and judicial forums in pakistan act in aid of supreme court judiciary and executive are bound to in aid of uh, act in aid of the supreme court and then there are rules of procedure under which the supreme court has promulgated the supreme court rules 1980 then the third chapter of part 7 is the high courts 
High courts have been established by Article 192, appointment of judges, oath of office, retiring age is 62, uh, 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 acting chief judges, ad additional judges, seats of the high courts, and then jurisdiction under Article 199, which embodies in it various uh, uh, writs, which, can, which we call writs, but in fact, these are orders uh, in terms of the language of Article 199. And uh, then there is Article 199, sub Article 5, which defines a person and very elaborately explained by the superior courts in their judgments. Because even the commas in this art, sub Article do matter and turn the tables. Transfer of High Court judges has never happened. The CN of uh, high Court binding on subordinates court, yes, it embodies in it the doctrine of state decisis to, to the extent of lower courts. Then there comes the Federal Sharia Court, which has been established by Article 203. Article 203, uh, there is this chapter, which was inserted in the Constitution, 203A to 203J. And the Constitution, the powers of the Federal Sharia Court have been defined. And then uh, uh, there is this supreme, there is this part of the Supreme Court which we ca call Sharia Appellate Bench. Sharia Appellate Bench hears appeals from the decisions of the Federal Sharia Court and assert it has a special composition. Uh, I think that uh, that's will be it regarding the syllabus, which is including in, in low guard regarding the constitution of Pakistan as so as uh, as far as the substantive part is concerned. So I will entertain all the questions regarding these provisions and I'll be here by your side to answer any questions. Uh, back to you, Dr. Basi. Thank you very much for this comprehensive um, uh, overview of the constitution. May I uh, propose that we should have a 10 minutes break and then we should uh, reconvene. Uh, sure. And if you have any questions, so questions could be directed in our uh, in our uh, in our um, chat. Uh, chat box. Yeah. All right. Chat. So we'll reconvene after ten minutes. Thank you very much.